Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers should exercise caution when watching this program as it may contain images of deceased persons. Everyone loves to watch films and now with the rise of Indigenous filmmakers, our stories are being heard. The rise of Indigenous filmmaking is beginning to positively change public views of Indigenous people and will continue to do so for years to come. Abby Williams reports. Here in the southwest of Australia, increased funding and support from federal agencies and places such as Screen West have enabled motivated Noongar filmmakers to produce their stories. Not only nationally, but internationally, audiences are witnessing these spectacular films, the stories that are transporting us into an immensely rich and spiritual world that has existed for over 40,000 years. I think in the past, uh, Indigenous films probably weren't regarded as something that was a, an important part of the Australian film culture. Hailing from the northwest of Australia, the current Screen West Indigenous manager, Kelrick Martin, directed and co-produced many films, including the documentary musical Prison Songs and Diagon. Around the 90s, you know, you've had things like the um, Deaths in Custody Commission and you've had the uh, Terra Nullius results and Mabo and all that sort of stuff and it really started to change people's political beliefs and political understandings of Indigenous Australians. And reconciliation, of course, was a big movement at those times as well. So I think a lot of government departments started to take upon themselves to really want to make those changes. Um, one of the key organisations, I think, which made change for Indigenous film was Screen Australia. Um, when they set up their Indigenous unit back in the mid-90s and they started to focus money and energy on developing Indigenous filmmakers. Dr Glenn Stasik is highly regarded in the Indigenous film industry. Owner of Black Russian Productions, he's an active member in the Noongar community. 1979, 78, there was a film called My Survival as an Aborigine from Essie Coffee. That was the very first film that an Aboriginal person was in control or certainly in key control as a director um, uh, and auteur as part of the filmmaking process. So up to that point there were about five if not six thousand hours of ethnographic material that were um, recorded and, and, and produced by non-Aboriginal filmmakers about Aboriginal culture. So it took one film in 1978, 79 to actually change the landscape. A lot of the Noongars or a lot of the Aboriginal community already know about these particular stories. They're, they're aware of them. It's making uh, the wider audience aware. And I, I try and find an audience that is young through to old. I, I want people to come to my films to be educated, to some degree entertained, and then certainly maybe changing their point of view. Writer and director Dennis Simmons is a highly respected member of the Noongar community and co-directed the film Wajuk to Wajima. So, you know, in the past we've been trashed in the media, always negative stereotypes, those kind of things. So having, you know, films that really highlight our plight, um, the good things that we do, our culture, our history, I think it's really important for people to know about that because in Australia, Aboriginal issues and Aboriginal people are kind of swept under the carpet. If somebody wanted to get into the, an Aboriginal person wanted to get into the film industry, firstly they could approach Screen West um, and say, look, you know, and they'd be speaking to Kelrick Martin. But it's, it's not an easy industry just to walk in and make a film. They, um, Screen West does have opportunities for first time filmmakers to come in and do a, a little short film, which is always good at first, a good first step. Look, Indigenous filmmaking and Aboriginal storytelling and um, Aboriginal multimedia is completely on the rise. Audiences love it. International audiences particularly love seeing Aboriginal stories uh, on television and in camera and on uh, film festivals. And um, the voice is there and now it's about making sure that we uh, continue with telling the stories that have been for thousands of generations in the making. Joining us now in the studio is film director and dancer Perrin Bonzer. Thank Welcome, you. Perrin. And Carla Hart, who's also a filmmaker, writer and performer. Welcome, Carla. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for joining us here on Noongar Danji. Now, Perrin, tell us how you got into filmmaking. Uh, that is a very interesting question. Um, 
I, I'm not entirely sure. I, I guess one day I stopped dancing and, and started making films. Carla, you recently won the Western Australian Screen Awards for your first documentary, Magic Korongs. Can you tell us about your experience? The first one is quite special to me because it's about the season of the Kwandong, and, um, which is a native fruit. And uh, even though, you know, I don't live home, like we still go home for Kwandong season and various other seasons. So um, it was filmed with my family. So there's a lot of my family and my, my country in that film. So to actually win an award um, and, you know, have my family in, in such a beautiful film about something so special to me is, yeah, well, it's amazing. It's coming up to Kwandong season, isn't it? Um, Kwandong season, yeah. Um, actually, I just directed a doco in Noangrup for FTI down there um, about the mission and the reserve um, people. Um, and, yeah, we went Kwandong picking, so that was a lot of fun. So I actually made jam the other day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Warmed it up in the microwave, had it with ice cream. The perks of being a filmmaker, you get to yeah. do some really fun stuff when you're in country. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about fun stuff, Perrin, you've directed a great range of documentaries, including Fighter, which features our host here, Neil. Can you tell us about um, your experience working together? Um, yeah, you know, Neil's, Neil's a great guy to work with. He's, he's a very, well, I don't think I need to tell you how strong of a character he is. Very, very enigmatic guy. Um, I guess probably the hardest part of making that film would be asking him these, these really, really personal questions about um, you know, his, his family and, and, you know, past traumas in his life. That, you know, you don't really want to have anyone relive such painful memories, but, um, you know, we were making a documentary um, and unfortunately, well, I guess fortunately in this case, we were able to make a documentary that, you know, perhaps can show people how they, you know, that they too can get over their own sense, of their own traumas that that might have gone through. I don't know. Hmm. I felt it was a uh, when it first went through, it was going through depression and stuff, and my me sharing that with I suppose everybody, and looking at it now and hearing from people now talking about it being uh, motivating them, so um, and being a, a motivational sort of um, uh, doco. So um, that's the kind of feedback I get now. So. And while we're talking about motivating, we want to know a little bit about what motivated you, you know, what was that turning point in, in your life to say, you know, filmmaking, there's something that I can, I can do? Well, I mean, I've studied performing arts at WAPA and at ECU, and I guess I've always been um, a storyteller from a small age. I loved English and, you know, writing. So it was kind of like a natural progression to, to filmmaking, because I was already writing plays and acting and, um, you know, doing various other things in the arts and the community. So uh, I was saying before to Kimba, um, you know, like having been like brought up in the country, been around a lot of elders, um, you know, having that knowledge of cultural things, I, I also feel like it's my responsibility if I have the skills to write. There's so much great things happening in the Indigenous filmmaking. What, in your opinion, is something that can change or improve for the wider audience to see what's happening in Indigenous filmmaking? Yeah, well, that's, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I guess, you know, in terms of, like, I mean, NITV, it's great that it's on S um, SBS now. Um, ABC do a lot of really great Indigenous programs as well. It'd be fantastic to see more Indigenous programs on you know, like mainstream kind of channels like 7, 9 and 10, so you get used to an Indigenous face. I mean, we have um, Maine uh, Wyatt, who's on Neighbours now, and mm. but you rarely see jackals. blackfellow faces on mainstream shows unless it's, you know, like a random here and there. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's more commercial, but people themselves, you know, audience members need to start tuning into alternative media um, rather than the mass media, um, so that they can watch more, you know, amazing Indigenous um, television and film. Thank you, Carla and Perrin, for joining us here on Noongar Dandri, and good luck for your future films and projects. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you.